Spectre Console allows you to turn your C-Sharp console apps into visually appealing, informative applications. In this series of videos, we are learning how to take full advantage of this library in 10 minute chunks. The source code is available as a link in the description. In this lesson, we're gonna learn how to format exceptions for display so that they're easier to read and parse. If you like the series, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and visit imtimcorey.com for more training resources. Let's get started. So here I have a try catch, which all we're doing in the try is throwing exception, which will immediately come down to the catch. Now, normally we do something like console.writeline here and it'd be kind of ugly to read. In fact, let's just do that just so we see um, what this might look like if we were to run this as is. So let's run this and we get this, which it's all just kind of blends together. So let's see if we can't make that look better. And to do that, what we're going to do is say ANSI console dot write exception and just pass in EX. That's the only change we're going to make is just passing in that way instead. And we get this, which already is a step up. We have different things colored in different ways. So they kind of pop out at us. The message is very clear right here. We've got where it's running and what the, the method was that threw that error. But we can do better. So let's do that. First off, we have a lot more information we can do to make this a little clearer. Let's put a, a blank line in here. Console right line is fine. And I'm going to do a, another um, ANSI console dot write exception. And I'm going to pass in EX, but then I'm also going to say exception format, plural, exception formats, dot, and we can do uh, shortened paths, shortened types. We can do shortened methods is in here, um, or we can just say shorten everything. Now, just like before, if we wanted to pass in more than one thing, we could do that. I'll show you how to do that. It's just the pipe character and pass in more, but um, this will be good enough for now to allow us to shorten everything and see the difference. I'm going to write both ways out. We can see the difference in our um, output. So right now we have two exceptions, but one is noticeably shorter. And yet we don't seem to lose any, um, any data. For example, this is the path that we're shortening. Instead of saying all this, we just see program.cs. And we also have shorten the type. So instead of system.io to invalid exception, we just see invalid exception. And we're also shortening our methods. Instead of program and then the angle brackets main, we just see the angle brackets main. So this makes our code a lot easier to, or our output a lot easier to read and a lot more concise on the screen. This has the relevant information. This just contains mostly noise. We pretty much know where invalid data exceptions come from. We know where the path is to program.cs usually, but maybe we don't. And let's actually address that particular one. So we can pipe one more thing here and let's do this on new line and let's bring this one down as well so that they're um, under each other. We can pipe one more thing and say exception formats dot show links. Now, what's going to do? It's going to make it so we can see a link to our file. So notice that program.cs now has this dotted line under. If I hover over, it's a solid line. If I were to click on it, it gives me uh, sometimes, there you go. It gives you the path. It says file colon slash slash and then the path to that file. Now this, this one is not a valid link for my machine. So if I click on it like so, it says that's not currently supported because of this is the, not the, the, the format my PC is expecting it to be in. Um, it would, I believe, work if I was in bash. So with that, I can still see what the path is to that file, even if I couldn't go to it. But that's what links will allow you to do. And that's also how you append multiple of these. So you don't have to do all of the trimming down. If you wanted to see what the system.io is, then you would 
um, not shorten the types. So you would shorten the paths and the methods, but not the types. And then you'd see the full type of your exception. But I really like this, but I think we can go even a step further than this. And that is, let's look at formatting or styling how our exceptions look. To do that, what we're gonna do is we're going to add another thing. And that is exception settings. So let's grab the console right line. We'll put uh, another blank line in between. And we're going to start with this same EX. But now what we're going to do is say new exception settings. And then we'll put curly braces and start populating this. We have two options, format and style. If you want to do format, we could do things like our shorten everything and so on. We could also work on style. So let's start with uh, format. And we're going to say equals and then just say shorten everything. And then we'll say style equals new. And then let's put curly braces here. And if you notice, there's a whole list of things we can style. We can style the method, the message, the non-emphasize, the parameter name, the parameter type, the parentheses, the path, and so on. Let's just style the message. We're going to say equals new. And then we'll say dot, let's say, oops, sorry, new style. And then say, let's change our foreground color to color dot red, which it already is, but just good practice for you to see how to style foreground or background. But then I want this thing to be really obvious. So I'm going to say decoration and say decoration dot slow blink. Okay, so there's a lot there. Let's unpin this so you can see the whole thing. But that's now our style. And again, you can put comma and style more things if you want inside of this exception. But that gives us that same exception, shorten everything, and now style it with the uh, message itself blinking. So let's run this message. And notice this last one, we've got the message blinking saying, hey, you forgot to give me the data. Um, really clear, and now it really draws your eye to the most important thing, which is the message itself. And then they can figure out, oh, it's in main on program.cs at line 256. So that is how to style exceptions using Spectre Console. Now, I want to point out this is the last video in this series by default. Now, there may be more videos coming as you ask or request for more videos. You can leave those down in the comments below or go to suggestions.imtimcorey.com. That's a better way of going. Um, leave a suggestion there for future Spectre console content. But I think this gives you a, a wide overview of how to use the various parts of Spectre console. I hope you've had a great time in this series. I know I have. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.